Here's a little bit in the story about how Princess Melody gets bullied. Some fairies would tease her because they had heard whispers that the princess was under a magical spell. They also laughed at her and called her names behind her back because they could see straight through her wings. It's the 17th of December 2019. We're going to talk about anti-bullying and why I included this in the Butterfly Lullaby book. Basically, there are two characters in the story. Sunset Bunny, who's Jodie. She's got cystic fibrosis and diabetes. And then there's the mermaid fairy, who's her sister. And um, she was just she was bullied for just not joining the bullies. She refused to join the bullies. So Mandy had to get her move to school. But Jodie, who's very ill with cystic fibrosis and diabetes, it's absolutely astonishing that the bullies got away with hurting her and making her feel bad and stopping people from being friends with her just because she's ill, you know. Um, I just can't believe the school system doesn't deal with bullies properly here in the UK. They seem to be allowed to get away with it. But anyway, um, so Mandy ended up homeschooling Jodie because when she was in school, she had to inject herself with insulin because she's diabetic and one of the girls just refused to allow Jodie to have any friends at all in the school and she wasn't allowed to have anybody to go with her while she injected herself, which she needed at the time. She needed some support there. So, but on the happy note, Jodie actually is older now. She's in her 20s, I think, now. And um, she's been doing a college course and she's doing very, very well. Top of her class in her art and design course. So, well done, Jodie. So, you know, there are, you know, we just have to deal with bullies. And I think, you know, in my book, I mention an anti-bullying school. So um, I never in a million years thought that my daughter would get bullied. She's the butterfly princess, Princess Melody. And in the story I mentioned how she's bullied about having see-through wings. Because uh, her wings are different to all the other fairies. But, you know, to think that she was three then and now she's uh, 16. But I had to take her out of school. And it was thanks to Mandy, my cousin, that I found out about home education and why I eventually homeschooled. But I didn't homeschool straight away. So when she was eight, um, because we're a very, very proud dyslexic family and, um, you know, dyslexia is a gift. It's just the school system, sadly, does not um, understand dyslexia. And, um, yeah, children need one-to-one for dyslexia to five. My daughter's just done amazing well with homeschool. Home education's brilliant. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, especially if your child's been bullied, you know, it just gets them away from the bullies. They can get rid of the anxiety and they can start to concentrate on what they're good at and they can really take it to that next level. But anyway, so, you know, for me, I was never bullied in school. I never suffered bullying. But I did actually have a friend that was bullied and at 12 years old I got up on the bench in school and I was only little, um, probably one of the smallest in the school, but I stood up there on the bench and I shouted, leave her alone in a very, very loud voice and the bullies stopped bullying her. So it's amazing how just one little person can make a big difference. You know, by speaking out, not following the sheep. You know, the trouble is, I think a lot of people and children, adults, etc., they just follow the popular people, and they just just to, for a quiet life, and they don't want to stand out. But sometimes, you know, you take that risk, and you can make a big, big difference in somebody's life, and I think that's fantastic. So anyway, going back to Melody, when she was in school, um, because of the dyslexia. She struggled with um, maths and English and writing, etc. And uh, she had a teacher that was very old school. And, you know, instead of actually saying, you know, um, I'll help you, you know, quietly and giving her support quietly, 
you know, like so many other teachers, he gets the children to stand up in class, say at their times tables loud, knowing full well some of the children struggle and they'll be made fun of. Now that's not the way to do it. You know, you know, um Going back to Melody, um, so, you know, she was forced to stand up in class and say her times tables out loud and the children made fun of her and the teacher didn't understand and, um, you know, I ended up going to the teacher and saying, look, you're, she's really getting stressed out. He just turned around and said to me, um, I'm stressed out. I've got to teach 30 children in this class and I'm stressed out. And I sort of, I get that. I get that, you know, teachers are stressed out because of the school checks. You know, they've got to be the best school, which really does sadly discriminate against dyslexic children and children, other children that need help that just don't fall into the category of, you know, the child that's got massive huge memory that can do everything and is no problem to the school you know unfortunately that's not how life works you know we're all different and um you know dyslexic children need one-to-one -one. so anyway um you know i got a move class she was fine for a while and um you know she has two great teachers understood children and they these teachers had pets in their class and they were lovely teachers and she loved the class she loved going to school the only thing i would say is that you know because she moved class she wasn't allowed to have art because they had to share an art teacher between two classes so she'd had her bit of art apparently and she wasn't allowed it again so she used to get very upset because that was the only um class that she really enjoyed so that was really quite sad to watch that. But otherwise, the teachers were really lovely and it wasn't their fault, you know. That's just the way the school worked. Um, so then she um, went to another class and unfortunately this class didn't work. I knew I couldn't get a moved class again because of the struggles I had with the first time getting a moved class. So I had no option but to just take her out of school and home educate and... You know, people, it was a struggle because people in the UK just don't understand home education. It's very alien to them. And, oh, the bullying that we went through with that is, um, that's another story. But um, anyway, we got through it. And now my daughter's teaching art um, locally in, um, you know, one of the churches and she's got funding from the local council who support her and you know and she's she's been using google classroom she's got a lovely teacher english teacher google classroom and she got 40 out of 40 with her english um assignment recently this week and i am so so proud of her she writes better than i write and uh oh my gosh her descriptive writing writing is just out of this world i really am excited for her and i think that one day she will be able to write a great great book so don't believe all the stories you hear about dyslexia you know Catherine cookson she was um an author probably one of the best authors you know and she was dyslexic so you know don't believe everything you hear about dyslexia there are some amazing people out there Steven Spielberg, you know, the most amazing film director. He's dyslexic, Richard Branson. Um, and look how fantastic he's done in life, you know, all these different businesses he's created. And um, who else? Einstein. Einstein was dyslexic. You know, there are so many people out there that have done really well in life. And it's because of dyslexia. And that's what Richard Branson's got. He's got Made by Dyslexia charity, basically telling you that you can be made by dyslexia because it is a gift. So don't get disheartened in life. You know, follow your dreams. And always have a backup plan. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? 
So there's also Cambridge University online that do courses, you know, for children. And um, she's Melody's doing the art course with that. So, you know, there are good things about home education. And there are some good things about, you know, state education. You know, my nieces and nephews go to state school. They are state educated and they, they enjoy it. They have suffered with bullying, but some children are more resistant than others. You know, if your child is suffering with bullying, you really, really need to do something about it and stop the bullying. And if you can't, you know, unfortunately, the state education system does tend to side with the bullies. They get away with it. So, you know, if you can home educate and get them away from that or get them into a different school or just do something, but make sure that anxiety is you know has a lid put on it and it doesn't get out of control because once that gets out of control you know it is just a slippery slippery slope you know I know so many people that have got mental health problems because of bullying it's not funny it is a serious serious thing and that's why I took my daughter's um bullying seriously you know um I didn't want her ending up like people I know on medication and not having a life, because some people that um, end up getting really ill with anxiety, there's no, you know, they just don't get better, some of them, and it's really, really sad. So, yeah, that's my story, and I just hope, you know, please do share the story of other people, and, you know, shine a light, you know, let's educate our children to be better, to be kind to people, have empathy for people, and even though we might not understand everybody, let's try just to be nice people and make a difference in this world. So that's all from me. I hope you enjoy some of the pictures from my Butterfly Lullaby book. Um, if you'd like to buy the book, um, my unfortunately my website got hacked a long time ago, and that's a long story, by bad people. Um, so I have put a Butterfly Lullaby on hold. I was selling my books in Borders, um, a wonderful American bookstore. Uh, who really supported me and they sold my peg doll kits etc sadly they went under um, the UK is quite a difficult place you know they were my books were being advertised on Amazon and I've seen that they've taken that down and I had um, some amazing reviews on Amazon uh, they seem to let people sell my books on their um, use for big money but, you know, <laughs> anyway, it's another story. And also these other bookstores, you have to be really famous to get in to these bookstores and to sell your book. And I think it's a very elite run system that it needs to change. We need to support the little people. And um, I've got other projects that I'm working on that are going to hopefully help families. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited about the future. And, uh, yeah, so if you want to buy my book... Send me a message um, and uh, I'm on Facebook under Sharon J. Bainbridge. I'll put some links in the description where you can contact me. Send me a private message. So, yeah, have a wonderful day and uh, chin up because I tell you what, you know, I'm very lucky that I can weather the storm. You know, we've been through some really, <laughs> really bullying times, but... Um, I've got some fantastic friends. I'm very, very lucky and I've got a wonderful family. So I am a warrior, I suppose, you know, like my nan. I'm a warrior and I just will not be defeated. So um, stay strong, people, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>